trying to go natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm a little bit under the weather and everything, so I hope I can get through this. But I had to come on and talk about this because you know when serious topics arise in the natural hair community, I really like to get on to share my views and to help inform viewers out there. Recently, Pamela Booker, CEO of Coils by Nature, did a Facebook Live where she really talked about what's really going on behind the scenes for black-owned natural hair companies. The existence of black-owned natural hair companies are being put at risk, let's say. She described that bigger brands are coming in and stealing ideas creating cheap duplicates of things, not providing the same quality product and coming in and replacing the smaller black owned natural hair companies on the shelves. She kind of explained some of the role of the retailers, again mainstream retailers in that whole process. So I definitely encourage you to take a look at her live and then perhaps come back to hear my response or my analysis or my contribution. But I was here for pretty much everything she said. There were only a couple things which I'll mention at the end that I didn't agree with, but overall, Word for word, she was correct. And I know it's a hard truth and some of y'all don't want to hear it, but that doesn't make it any less true. I do feel like it's on us to save the black owned natural hair companies and to not give away <laughs> the natural hair industry to big mainstream brands as bloggers, as consumers, as viewers, to protect our wealth, to protect our health, to protect this whole industry that's been built up over the last few years. So somewhat this video is for those who already believe in supporting black owned businesses. She did a great job of explaining why we should support black owned businesses. So. You know, I'm not here to completely give you a one-on-one -on, -one on why we should, but I'm going to quickly go over some key reasons why we should support black owned businesses as black people and as people who are concerned with equality in general. So I don't just buy black owned either. I buy black owned where I see that the owner is aware of being black owned and the responsibility and duty around that. I see that the owner is giving back, is speaking out for black issues. Those are the ones that are helping to empower you. When you buy black owned, you're investing in people who invest in us, people who hire us, people who don't discriminate against us because they are us. White companies, they might hire a few tokens, some minimal representation, but they're not, when they see a black person, they're not just hiring you like if they don't see race. So you saying that you just buy stuff and you don't see color when you buy stuff is kind of naive because they don't they definitely see color when they decide if to hire you when we invest in black owned businesses you increase the chance of your children and your grandchildren being able to get a job being able to just be in a world where it's easier for them to make it so it's an investment it's not just about buying this product it's about an investment in your whole community in people who think about what black people want what black people need and our comforts first instead of us having to try our best with the mainstream things that is so valuable. Do I need to say anything more, right? We are investing in people who can come up with deep conditioners, pre-poos. Do I need to say anything more than that? Like that should be the end of it right there. Why should I even have to explain anything more than that? Instead of us having to use some super stripping shampoo, we are investing in people who can come up with moisturizing, conditioning, shampoos and co-washes. Mainstream companies create things for people who don't look like us, who don't have our hair texture, who don't have our melanin, and just expect us to figure out how to make do with it or tough basically. We are the ones who come up with things for our hair that are designed for our hair. And then we let mainstream companies see that money is passing, see what the entrepreneurs who struggle with little support came up with to just steal it. Oh, they like shea butter, let's put shea butter on the front and in the back is all sorts of chemicals you can't name and sell it for like $6 and let that fly. I don't even understand how that could fly with anybody. Knowing that you are buying something that is stolen off the back of a black person who is not seeing any benefit from it and you are not seeing any benefit from it. I mean, maybe it works on your hair, maybe not. But compared to the original, it's such like a weak fake, weak duplicate. Plus, it's overpriced. You are saying, oh, I'm just going to buy the cheaper thing. But even though you're buying that for $5, that costs $1 to make. So you are giving them $4 of extra markup with no value. You're not getting that value back. And calling that a deal. When you could have bought a quality product that cost maybe $7 to make for $10 and given them $3 profit to a company who would again invest in you, create more things for your hair, not just copy but actually innovate and come up with things for your hair. I always look at ingredients because I'm always thinking about value. You're calling this stuff that actually have good ingredients overpriced? No. <laughs> Those are the ones that are priced reasonably. The ones that 
cost cents to make and selling for $2, that's the one that's overpriced. So it's just a matter of rearranging your whole mindset. So it's different if you really can't afford the more expensive brands. And in that case, I tend to say like, there are even cheaper black owned companies like Eden Body Works and so on that I recommend or even DIY, or even look for the Black Friday sales. If you held out for Black Friday, you can be getting quality products for $8. I think it's important to think about all of that, not just think about, well, I'm saving a dollar off the price buying something that's ridiculously marked up and full of chemicals. Like, the whole existence of natural hair products is why we should support black business, because Without black business, there wouldn't be any natural hair products. Without the black-owned companies coming up with natural hair products, there wouldn't be any. And don't tell me about old Pantene had brown bottles because they stole it from black-owned businesses in the 70s and 80s. So, you know, things are coming full cycle again. We went from having stuff back then, having it kind of being stolen by the mainstream companies, buying a bunch of white-owned stuff in the 90s, then creating stuff on our own again, and now we are seeing mainstream companies coming into do the same thing like the culture vultures, wealth vultures, innovation vultures just peering and waiting to come in and steal their ideas. Black businesses that we didn't support and they didn't support sell you the idea of their ideas, not even the actual quality product but just the shea butter on the top with chemicals in the back. Make money like it's such a game to them and you guys are falling for it. When we finally got some natural hair products like five years ago, you didn't need to tell anybody that black owned business was important five years ago. Ten years ago everybody was like whoa you know we have shea butter moisture back when it was black owned. Oh, we have like Jane Carter, Kinky Curly, some of the early ones. Black business is so important because they're giving us stuff we need. Now all of a sudden it's like who cares about black business anymore because mainstream businesses are coming in and stealing the very same ideas. Like make it make sense. Like make it make sense people. You wouldn't have Suave, you wouldn't have Head and Shoulders, you wouldn't have Cream of Nature, any of it without black owned businesses. So how can you fix your mouth too? say black owned businesses are this and that and the other like it makes no sense whatsoever none at all even the stuff that you see you can tell it's like they're rehashing stuff that black owned businesses came up with like years ago they're now coming up with they're now seeing honey they're now seeing shea butter like you can tell you can tell that it's not innovation it's not like necessarily research into what's good for you it's just research into what you've been buying and how to make the best knockoff like you wouldn't necessarily go running down to buy like chinese knockoffs why are you running down to buy mainstream american natural hair product knockoffs the mainstream companies are not going to come up with the next big thing for natural hair. So after you support them and allow all most of the black businesses to close like the black businesses of the 70s and 80s, after you support the mainstream companies and allow them to die out, what's going to happen is exactly what we had in the beginning of 2000, 2010, etc. where black people had a new need but we didn't have anybody to satisfy that need because we killed them all. We killed all the black businesses. We didn't have any way to help us when we needed it. And you guys are pretty much doing the same thing again. They're just looking to see how best to get money from us as cheaply as possible and that's not the same thing as support, that's not the same thing as investment in us. So Pamela made some great points. She mentioned that if we support black businesses now, that's going to lead to more availability and them being in stores. So rather than complain like they're not in stores, if you actually purchase from them online, they will eventually get into stores. Rather than complain about price, if you actually bought from them, they would be able to buy in bulk and bring their prices down. So it takes a bit of investment, of big picture thinking, of thinking ahead to be able to get the things that we need. And especially if you look at a black woman entrepreneur, they need extra support and they need our support as black women. They are the ones who will best represent us as black women. Like the whole shame to the back, which I've mentioned before, a black woman probably wouldn't have done that. Recently with the Brown Brothers thing of putting that racial dollars are like, those are things black women would not necessarily do. So when we support black women owned businesses, we support ourselves and support our own interests. You also kick a fuss about if you see a white woman on a natural hair product label and so on and rightly so. But you kick a fuss about that, but you don't mind if white owned companies come in and pretty much steal a natural hair community from under us. Like how does that make sense? Because that's even worse. You all kick a fuss for appropriation and you all don't want to see racial dollars all doing braids. But you are going to support white owned mainstream businesses that explicitly come in and appropriate and steal concepts and ideas and so on from black owned businesses. Like how does that even make sense? But would you be buying those products if it had a photo of the white CEO and like a little screenshot of all the things that 
they don't do for minorities or blacks or women on it and would you buy a product like that so why would you buy it just because they don't have those things explicitly on it but it's basically the same thing the CEO still doesn't care about black lives matter and so on why would you buy it just because it's not apparent to you when you can easily google and find out okay what's going on what's black owned what's not do I really want to be given this white guy money like you can google and find that out so if you won't buy it with the information printed out for you. Why would you buy it if the information is not there but they have like brown packaging? Like, I want you to think about that and answer that for yourself. Just a few months ago, I was in Target and it was popping. There were like natural hair, black hole, natural hair brands up and down the aisle. There's this one aisle that was just for us. And I would just go through there every time I go to Target. Like, no matter what I went for, I was going through there and just, you know, just enjoying, just enjoying that. This was for me. We were praising Target, like, oh, they're carrying all these natural hair brands. They really care about us. They look into the future and stuff like that. And I went to Target on Friday and it was completely a mess. Like, most of the brands were gone. The few that were there, like, just on the bottom, just kind of tossed around like even the beauty box which I first had lots of natural hair brands and stuff if you look at the beauty box now it's like practically nothing like practically no natural hair brands so they kind of hyped it to us I think they even did like a texture chart and stuff about natural hair and stuff on their website now the target beauty boxes hardly have any natural hair stuff they they pretty much wipe the shelves of us it was like okay well that was nice and we done with you and that is exactly how those other mainstream companies are gonna do it so you guys just need to wake up. You think Swag gonna be investing and flying around bloggers and giving you guys little checks in 10 years after they take over everything? No. Blogging, YouTube, and doesn't have a 401k, doesn't have a pension. So you guys doing things for a little few bucks now, not thinking about how you're killing off small black owned businesses now by pushing and feeding this rush to cheaper mainstream brands because you just, oh, I'm getting a check now. Not thinking about the future, not thinking about your future. Because after you tell all your followers to go and buy Swallow and Pantene and they take over the market and the black owned businesses are forced to close, they don't need you anymore. They don't need to be writing you checks anymore. Right now we are in a bubble, like the bloggers and stuff, we are in a bubble. We're thinking it's easy money, money's always going to be flowing. No. In 10 years, the scope could be completely different in terms of how much Pantene and Suave and so on is investing in natural hair. And then it'll be you to catch because of the situation you created by you're just like, give me something now. So you have to always think about that. Think about sustainability. I am 100% certain there is not going to be as much money invested in natural hair bloggers in 10 years. I can give you a kind of, I'm 100% certain of that. So would you be the one who's in that check because of what you're doing now? Think about it. We give it to them. We let them take over. Just because they're flashing a little bit of money at us. And they're not flashing anything near the amount of money that they're making. So it's up to us to kind of get woke, stay woke, and realize that. So for those of you who actually want to support black business, but you really, you know, can't afford the money, or you really don't have access to the products where you live, there are other ways to support that doesn't necessarily involve buying. Following them on social media is support. Liking their posts, reposting their posts, that's support as well. Just learning about them and being aware that they even exist is support. Maybe somebody might be asking and you can actually let them know about a black owned business that you heard of. It would help them to reach others and help them to reach those who are able to buy. When it comes to bloggers in particular, the brand influencer field is evolving. You want your brand to be true to you and not compromise yourself for a brand. Oh, well, let me not say this, let me not do this, let me get this check. Your brand is a collection of your individual choices. Do you want to look back in 10 years and realize that you are one of the people that sold a natural hair community to the mainstream brand? Do you want that to be your legacy? Like, think about it. Like, I know I would have more likes and more followers if I posted more like cheaper mainstream brands, but I choose not to, which isn't to say that I'll never mention a mainstream brand. I do sometimes mention like Eco Styler. I think I mentioned Trader Joe's once, but it's always kind of in perspective. Like if I do mention a mainstream company, I definitely try to put it in context. Like, you know, I want to use something cheaper for this reason, but the ingredients aren't that good. Like I'll pretty much always let you know stuff like that, just so that you can be aware that, you know, in a sense I'm settling or in what way is this mainstream option may not be as good as the typical options that I use. You know, sometimes you might want to show a mainstream brand just as a curiosity to say, well, you know, let's see how mainstream brands compare to the black owned businesses, something like that. That's fine too. It's not like if you just have to act like you don't exist. But if it's always in a context where people know that you value black owned businesses, then you don't even need to explain further. Like you don't even need to explain why you're showing mainstream brands if you going on to when you show black owned businesses, talk about how much you value them being black owned and how much you value their donation or investment in the community. Maybe you can give black businesses a discount if you're a blogger. Or maybe you can be more flexible and take more commission 
on sales as opposed to money up front or even if you had to take that swap check maybe you could be more honest in your reviews maybe you could do little subtle things like show us the ingredients in the back in a way that you let us know that this is crap without letting them know <laughs> that you're letting us know that hey I'm getting this check but be careful about this think about how you can play the system if you really need to get that swap check and that head and shoulders check you be the player don't be played and when you're reviewing the black cone business, you can definitely focus on the quality of your ingredients, on the investments made by that owner into the community, just highlight them being black owned and so on, black woman owned and so on, and how much you value that. Just doing that alone will give your viewers a sense of what's what and will help to curtail this big huge run to the store to pick up the knockoffs. If you like black owned business who, then clearly you're going to be part of the reason why people flock to the mainstream companies and part of the reason why these black businesses go under is just the truth. Deal with it. Don't blame me. So I know many people don't care beyond how much money comes out of their pocket and whether their product works for them and it's impossible to break down about black wealth, about investing in the community, about fighting discrimination like they don't care about any of that it just goes right over their heads they don't care about mainstream companies stealing from black businesses they don't care about any of that and it's frustrating but it's part of life and it's just something that we just have to accept and I guess the same for Pamela Booker and the same for anyone else that's work and believes in supporting black owned businesses you just have to accept that not everybody would and I guess coexist so I disagree with her saying get a job instead of like taking checks from swap and so on in the sense that I do think that blogging is a job but I definitely agree with her saying think about what's happening when you're taking checks now and how it's going to impact the future like I said blogging doesn't have a 401k doesn't have a pension YouTube can and often does just decide to kill channels like just cancel delete channels or delete all your subscribers and stuff so a lot of young people are coming on saying oh this is great i'm making money yes you're making money today but are you going to be making money 10 years from now your most secure future is tied up into black business to be honest as a blogger i also disagree with her comment about people who buy cantu and who i guess push <laughs> market cantu and the mainstream brands lacking integrity like i said before not everybody believes in supporting black owned businesses so i guess if they don't even believe it then they're not going against their moral code by buying mainstream or by not supporting black businesses. I think by that part, she was just frustrated. Not everybody is woke and you just have to kind of understand and accept that at the end of the day. But I do understand that she was going from a point of focusing on those who believe in, in buying black and investing black, as we all should if we are black. And that she is trying to actually encourage us to support black business, which I also agree with. She spoke the truth. The whole truth and i do think that we as bloggers and consumers need to understand our power and not allow ourselves to be used by mainstream companies even be used by black businesses to be used by anyone we as consumers can make a business successful by our choices we as bloggers can make people flock to certain businesses or not by our choices and what we choose to say and portray on the content that we create so that is a responsibility and we do have to think about the impacts of that our actions now will definitely determine whether there will be products for us and money for us as consumers and bloggers 10 years down the line so i know of course not everybody will agree a lot of people will be like take the money and a lot of people will be like as long as it works but hopefully even if you are one of those people in those camps you at least got something from this video let me know what you think down below let's talk about it do we have a responsibility to black businesses is there a benefit to having black businesses around should we support black businesses let's talk about everything in the comments down below so that's pretty much it um i realized my hair wasn't completely fluffed so i hope that wasn't too distracting but thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye